Hello, seventh grade. We are now in chapter 14 of the book of Numbers. We saw yesterday that that 12 spies were chosen from Israel to go into the promised land and to spy it out to see what kind of a land it was, what kind of people there were, uh, what kind of cities and, and um, towns that they had. And they came back with a report that this is a super abundant place. It's a fantastic place. Only problem is there's giants there. They're going to whoop us and we can't do it. And they came back and they, they brought that report back to the, the, all of Israel. And it says here in verse 1 that the congregation lifted up their voice and cried and the people wept that night. They, were, they thought they couldn't do it. They somehow were not re re realizing that it was God that was doing this. They somehow thought that this was their task and that they had to battle the giants and that they were going to lose. And it is amazing. The people of God are always like this. I am always like this. You are always like this. You're always, you're always forgetting that this life that you are, since you have been bought, your life belongs to God. God speaks for you. God is the one who is leading you. He's the one that will promote you or demote you. He's the one that will provide for you. He's the one that will put everything into your life, good and bad, that will lead you to be the kind of person that would bring the highest honor to his son. And so he has said, I'm going to get you to the promised land. And he got them all the way there. And then they, they said that they couldn't do it. Okay. So you're going to see that God then has to respond in discipline. And this is serious discipline today, you're going to see. okay. And also the people show themselves for who they are. I can see myself here in how the people act uh, pretty, pretty intensely. So let's read starting in 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron, and the whole congregation said to them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt! Or would that God that we had died in the wilderness? So they're griping. Of course, that's exactly what you are. You gripe. You're a griper. Like, oh, I wish we just died in Egypt. Why did we have to come here? Because now we have to fight. Because now we have to battle. Because now we have to win. See, you can, you can depress yourself and you can spook yourself and you can absolutely freak yourself out. And other people, you can freak each other out. How is it better if I would have died in the wilderness than coming to here and now I have to fight? We always think of ourselves in the worst of possible terms, that this is the worst situation that we can be in. No, it isn't. It's not the worst. God has got you there, and he's got you here for a purpose, even if you don't like your situation. He can use this situation in your life, and he can make you a fighter, frankly. Here's verse 3. Wherefore has the Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword? Do you see that is absolutely no faith. No faith. God brought us here so that he could kill us. God brought us this far so that he could humiliate us and, and then ruin us. That is, that is what many people who even dare to think that there is a God would believe. That if, that if things are not going exactly the way I want them to, then somehow God's out to get me, or God made did this to me. Okay, you have to, you have to, you have to preach the gospel to yourself, and the gospel is good news, not bad news. God is for us in Christ; He is not against us, and it's the same thing. He drew His people there. He had every intention that they would go in victoriously, and they are griping as though God is mean and God is bad. And that, that hate in their heart is just coming to the surface. Remember, if I have a jar of pond water, it can look really clear until you shake my jar. You shake my jar, and I got muddy water. And this is what's happening. This, con this conflict, this, this heat that's coming from the, uh, from the situation that they're in is bringing to the surface the stuff that's already there. The sin is there already. It's not that this made the sin happen. It caused the sin to come to the surface, and you can see yourself as a sinner. And much of much of what God does in my life and in your life 
is to bring us to a realization of our sin so that we can turn from it. We can repent from it. We can be healed from it. God is not our enemy. But we can make ourselves God's enemy, and this is what the people are doing. So, uh, now, this is an important verse, because this uh, God's going to come back to this verse at the end of this chapter. Wherefore is the Lord, Lord brought us into this land to fall by the sword, okay, that our wives and our children should be a prey? Were it better for us to return to Egypt? <coughs> so, they want to go back to Egypt. Why? Because we're going to fall by our sword, and our wives and children are going to be a prey, okay? to what, whoever it is that we're going to try to fight, that they are going to either be killed or slaves to these people. So God has brought us to ruin. Let's go back to slavery. Let's go back. Okay. Now God's, God's going to call their mind back to verse 3 at the end. And they said to one another, let's make a captain and let's return to Egypt. So they're, they're mutinying. They're, they're going to let's get a, let's get a leader. Let's go back to Egypt. We're out of here. You can just imagine the nasty little politician who's grubbing around trying to get everybody back to go, let's go back. I, I like to make I like to make bricks. I like to make bricks all day. Let's go back and trying to get people as though they that God hadn't brought them through. Okay, it just it's a relevate it, it's a revelation of who we are when our conflict rises. Okay, and God does this so that we can repent. Here's five. And Moses and Aaron fell on their face <clears throat> before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. So the two spies that gave the good report are like, what? You want to go back? No, let's go on. Let's press on. Let's fight. We can do this. God is, God is with us. And so the people are now rebelling. And they are they have despaired. And now they're going to quit. They're going to go back to Egypt. I wonder if there's any, any people that have been brought all the way to the border of God's promises and then decided, no, God is actually not good. God is bad. And I'm going back to slavery. It was more fun when I partied with the friends. Okay, It was more fun when I did as I pleased, when I was king. Okay, How many? How many got so far and then decided that they were going to rebel and turn back? I bet you there's more than just these people. Okay, So Joshua and Caleb tore their clothes. They spake to all the company of the children of Israel, the land which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. All right? They're trying to, to uh, convince them otherwise. And the Lord, uh, if the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it to us, which is a land that flows with milk and honey. This is seriously good. And God, if he's with us, will bring it to us. See, they have faith in God. They don't have faith in their ability to fight, which the other people, when they were like, we can't fight these giants. So let's go back to slavery. <clears throat> Only rebel ye not against the Lord. Neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. Don't worry about your adversaries. Don't worry about these conflicts. Don't worry about these things that are in your face that seem so big that they will destroy you. If God is for you, you can get all the way that he intends you to go. He, you can go all the way. In fact, he intends for you to go all the way. Don't shrink back because you have no faith. Okay, Their lack of faith is going to testify against them. Their lack of faith in God. Because you, it is Christ who saves you through his death, his life, his death, his resurrection. But your faith is what holds on to that. It's what, it's what makes that available to you. It's through faith that you believe. Your belief is is not what saves you. Christ saves you, but it's your belief that attaches you, the, it's the bond that God gives you. God gives you the faith. And so even if you are of little faith, even if you have the faith like a mustard seed and you're, you're despairing because you're like, God, I don't even have faith. I don't have any faith. I must not even be yours because your people have faith in you. If you have the tiniest shred of faith, you hold on to that with all you've got, and you keep going. Okay, 
So this is verse 10. But all the congregation bade them with stones. Okay. Um, bade stone. Uh, bade them stone them with stones. They were going to stone Aaron and uh, and Moses. They were going to stone them to death. Okay. And the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said to Moses, How long will this people provoke me, and how long will you ere you believe me for the signs which I showed among them? I will smite them with a pestilence and disinherit them, and will make of thee a greater nation mightier than they. Okay, this is the second time that God has... I'm not, it's not tempting Moses, but it forced Moses to pray. It forced Moses to remind God of his covenant that he, he wasn't, that he's, he is, because of his promise, he's going to get these people all the way. Okay? So let me destroy them. And Moses said, so Moses, remember, is that intercessor. God put Moses there to intercede, to pray, so that, so that these people would be restored. Okay? You may just be that person in someone's life that, you, that no one's praying for. And if you pray for, God has set you there in order to pray that he might bless instead of destroy. So he said, they've, they've wasted it. They've done every, they are, I'm going to destroy them and disinherit them. Okay, and I'll make you into a great nation. He's talking to Moses again. <clears throat> Moses said to the Lord, then the Egyptians will hear it, for they, uh, for thou brought us out of the people for, and might from among them. Okay, he's basically appealing to God's character and also God's reputation. God, your reputation will go down because the Egyptians knew that you got them out of here. Okay? So then it says, They will tell the inhabitants of this land, and they heard that the Lord art among the people, and that the Lord have seen face to face, and that cloud standeth over them, and thou goest by them by pillar of cloud and pillar of fire by night. If you kill this people as one man, then the nations which have heard thy fame will speak of thee, saying, Because the Lord was not able to bring out the people of the land which he swore to them, therefore he has slain them in the wilderness. So Moses is not appealing because they were good. Moses didn't say, Oh, don't kill them. They're not bad. They're good. No, Moses recognizes what they've done is, is intolerable. But he's appealing to God on God's reputation and for God's name, for the glory of his own name, that God would do as he promised and be good to this people for no reason of the people's sake, but for his own sake. Okay? And remember, Moses' prayer is that God did that. God put him there, and he set Moses up into where every experience in Moses' life led him to the point where he trusted God at that point. And now his faith is holding the, the nation together. His faith, re, returned to God, is allowing the whole nation to be spared. Okay? This is amazing. Faith, which most people do not have, and most people who have it do not use it, is the strongest thing in the world. It is the strongest thing in the world. And because most people don't have it, they don't even believe it exists. Faith is simply trusting that God is good and that God has promised you specifically something and that he will not break his promise. And it doesn't matter what the appearance is. It doesn't matter what it looks like. You hold on to it. You hold on to it and you stop your ears and you close your eyes and you just say, no, I know what's true and I will believe what's true. And that's how you go about your life. Okay, Your faith will is enough. Your faith is enough. So we're now at 19. Moses says, pardon, please pardon them. The iniquity of this people according to the greatness of thy mercy, as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even till now. They were bad in Egypt. They were bad all during the path. You've been good to them to now. Still be good to them based upon your mercy, based upon your promise. And the Lord said, I have pardoned according to thy word was God's intent to do it, and he set up an intercessor, okay? Remember, that's what Christ is for you. He is praying for you right now. Even if you belong to him, he is praying for you right now. He's continuing to, to show mercy to you, okay, that your sins not destroy you, okay? because your sins are just as disgusting to God as other people's sins. Your sins are just as filthy 
in fact, more filthy because how could someone who has been loved, has been shown love, be such a rebel and a renegade? That's what we are when we're sinners. And we're sinners all the time. So our sin is more disgusting because it means more. We should know better and we should live better. But when we sin, our sins are covered because of our Savior. Okay, But we are to continuously remind ourselves of the gospel so that we do not try to live like the world. We don't live like them and saying, oh, it doesn't matter, we have a God, we have a Savior. That is not the life of a disciple. Okay, here's 21. But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of the Lord, because all of those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness, and have tempted me now these ten times, have not hearkened to my voice. Dot, dot, dot. Okay? These people who should have trusted me by now. These people who should, who have every single thing that they needed to show faith. And they showed no faith. These men and women, we'll see them all. Because they have tempted me these ten times, grumbled against me, hated me, despised me, thought I was bad instead of good, um, griped that they would rather be slaves than a free man under your leadership. They would rather have Pharaoh as their king than God as their king. Okay, This is what they're saying. These are, these are hateful, awful words. God said, because of this, okay, 23, Surely they shall not see the land which I swore to their fathers, neither shall any of them that provoked me see it. These people are going to fall in the desert. These people are going, they're going to wander around for 40 years until every last one of them dies. And when the last bone falls, when the last body falls, slumps over dead, then they'll be at the border of Canaan again. And these children who were going to be prey are now going to be the ones that will inherit the land that God promised to Abraham. Remember, it's not he didn't promise it to these guys, to Bob and Larry. He promised it to Abraham that your descendants I'll bring in. Well, he didn't break his promise by waiting a generation. These people who provoked me will never see it. Okay, Hebrews makes this as a serious warning that these people who had no faith did not go in to possess the land, and they died in the desert. So if, likewise, if you show no faith, you will die in the desert and not inherit. Okay, That your faith is not what saves you, but your faith is what ties you to the Savior. Okay, And, so, and God gives this faith. So if you see this little puny, tiny, little glimmer of almost dead faith, Pray, pray, pray and repent. God is good, and he can get you all the way. But if you're a hateful, let's go back to Egypt kind of person, your body will die in the desert. That's God speaking, and this is, this is terrifying. Okay, Now, what would happen if you were just told, you will now not inherit? What would you do, especially if you were bad? Okay, I'm just giving you a moment to say, what would you do? Because I'm going to see see if you are right. If you would do what these people would do. Because they're going to try something. Okay, let's see. Oh, here's God still speaking. But my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him. Interesting. The Holy Spirit is what gives you the faith. The Holy Spirit that God sealed you with when he brought you to life. You were dead in a graveyard and God brought you to life. And he put his spirit in you, and that spirit is holding on to God with everything. That faith is evidence of your life. Your lack of faith is evidence of your, of your not life. Your, that lack of faith is what dead people do. They, there's, no, there's no hold. There isn't anything. The, the world is zombies. No kidding. They're zombies. They're, they don't have life in them. But, but Caleb had another spirit. Okay? God's Spirit was on him, and he followed me fully, and I will bring him into the land where he went, and his seed shall possess it. Okay, Now, Joshua as well, because Joshua went too. Now the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwell in the valley. Tomorrow, turn you and get you to the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. He said, turn around, we're going back. We're going back into the wilderness. Now they were at the border, and they're like, what? 
we have to go back into the wilderness? Yes, because God is still leading. If you don't want to inherit, if you don't want to go into blessing, if you're not willing to fight, turn around. You're going back into your wilderness. Okay? So it's, it's pretty stinky. Okay? Let's see 26. The Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil generation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. Surely, I say to them, as surely as I live, says the Lord, as you have spoken in my ears, so will I do to you. Your carcasses will fall in the wilderness, and all they that numbered of you. Remember, there was a numbering. All of those people were numbered 20 years old and higher. Okay, the beginning. These were the people that were to inherit. And now that census is telling you those are the people who are doomed to die. Anybody that was 19 is going to go in. Anybody that was 19 and a half, anybody whose birthday wasn't until next Friday, they will go into the, into the land. But anyone 20 years old and upward, whoever was numbered according to who is going to win this, is now changed to who is going to die in the desert. This is scary. So when you say, oh, it's the book of Numbers. Oh, it's saying more than I thought it was saying. It's the book of Numbers. What, are, what am I numbered? In what way am I numbered? Am I numbered among the saints? Am I munger, m numbered among those that will fall in the desert? Am I numbered among those who will be tortured? Am I numbered among those who will be rescued? Wow, I didn't even realize that that's what it was talking about. And it is. And you're going to see that there's a, there is another numbering at the end different than this. Okay, Doubtless you shall come into the land concerning which I swear to you to dwell, except Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. They're going in. They had faith in me. I will extend their lives past your lives. You will all die first, and they, as old men, will go in and possess the land. Okay? You all are going to go to your graves. At your normal time, after your life of wandering around in the wilderness till you die, then, then I'll let your children go in. Okay? Interesting. These people prevented their children for 40 years of knowing blessing. Their children, who could have gone in today, had to wait a whole lifetime before they could possess because of the faith of their parents. Your faith affects not just you, your faith affects others as well. But your little ones, which you said would be a prey, them will I bring in, and they will know the land which you have despised. They'll be ready. By the time they get back to the border of Canaan again, they'll be ready, and they'll be ready to fight. Okay, And your children shall wander in the wilderness forty years, and bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. Interesting, your whoredoms. They're not faithful to God, and they're going to remain not faithful to God. And God is not going to strike them dead right now. He's going to let them live. Okay? Those of you who despise the Lord, who roll your eyes at this, He will let you live. And you you will be a whore for the rest of your life. You will you will have a, a heart that is not towards God. That's what he's saying. They'll endure you. They'll bear you. They'll put up with you. Tolerate you. Tolerate your your lack of faith. Tolerate your lack of of um, trust in the Lord until your carcass fall in the wilderness. And that's not that they don't love you. Your children will love you. Okay, you can have some fun times and be a nice person, and but a person who is not trusting God is not living their life. They're riding on a, a conveyor belt. They're being they're being hauled from their birth till their death. They're not living. A person with faith lives. He has forward energy, motion. God takes them places. He does things. A person with no faith just goes from one bumbling circumstance to another. And that's what he said. They, you're, they will last with you. And your children will wander around in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years. Okay? That is forever. 40 years is longer than you can imagine. Just 40 years of nothing. Okay? 
and no blessing and knowing that you could have had it. It's frustrating. After the number of the days which you search the land, even 40 days, each day for a year you shall bear the the your iniquities, even 40 years, and you shall, shall know my breach of promise. Uh, numbers again. Numbers again. For the same number of days that you search the land, 40 days, every day will be a year. And for a year you will, for every day that you search out the land and showed no faith, you are going to pay for it by bumbling around for a year for every day. And men which Moses sent to search the land, who returned and made the congregation murmur against him by bringing up to say the land, even those men that did bring an evil report to the land, died. He struck them immediately. The ten died in their presence. All of them got sick immediately and died. Okay, So God let them know, he let them know, that these people did wickedness to you. These people led you to rebel against me, and I'll judge them. But I'm also going to judge you, because you should have had faith. But Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, which were by the men that went out to the land, lived. And Moses told these sayings to the children of Israel, and the people mourned. They're like, oh no. And they rose up in the morning and gathered them into the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, we are here, and we'll go into the place which the Lord has promised, for we have sinned. Let's go. Let's take it. God, God, God's right. We can do this. Okay. Do you think that God's going to let them go into the land now? They're like, we can do this. You're right. You're right. We were wrong. We sinned. Let's go. Let's take this land. God's saying no. Now the time, it was a limited time offer. It's not now. Now you're not coming into this land for another 40 years. I'm going to hold you. You can't go in. Okay. Moses said, Wherefore, why do you transgress the command of the Lord? It shall not prosper. God's not going to be with you if you go into the land. If you go right now to battle, you'll lose. Your, your winning had to do with God winning. Your, you aren't anything. It's not you. It's not that God said, these people are going to win, so I'm going to take them to the promised land. I'm not good enough to go to the promised land. God is not getting me to the promised land because he saw something in me that I could do. These people can't battle the giants. They're going to be destroyed. Okay? This is what I was asking whether you could figure out what would they do. They're like, well, let's go. If God is mad, let's let's just say sorry, sorry, and go. No, it's not. Now there, now there is a punishment. Now there is a chastisement. And the chastisement is that I'm not going to bring in these people until their children's generation, not yours. You have missed. Okay? Ugh. So, 42. Go not up, for the Lord is not among you. And you that will be smitten before your enemies, don't do this. You're going to get, you're going to kill yourself. And for the Amalekites and Canaanites are there before you, and you shall fall by the sword because you turned away from the Lord. Therefore, the Lord will not be with you. Okay? It is God's plan. And I am under God's protection only as I am under God's uh, government. When I decide to be my own force, then I only have myself to, to protect myself. And I'm not smart enough or strong enough or fast enough or whatever enough to get where, what I need. But they presumed to go to the top of the hill. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord of Moses departed not out of the camp. Moses said, no, 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 priests, you stay, you stay put. Okay. These people are acting on their own. This is not the people of God acting. These are some renegades. And the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites who dwelt in the hand and smote them and discomfited them, even to Hormah. Destroyed them. The people who ran in saying, we can battle this, and they were battling on their own strength, died. And it wasn't God's intention that they were to die. They showed no faith, and then they presumed. They were like, well, we'll just do it anyway. We'll just take it anyway. As though somehow they didn't go in in order to disobey God, and then they went in in order to disobey God. So they showed who they were, and they ended up in ruin. Okay? 14 is a seriously scary chapter. Scary chapter. But I'm thinking of myself. This is me I'm talking about. I'm talking about me. How many times has this been me? Okay? Learn from these people's mistakes. Repent and 
cleave to the Lord with all of your might, okay? Because that's what God is doing in your heart uh, by the Holy Spirit that he gave you. All right, see you tomorrow.